Hello y'all. This video is going to be about sometimes this happens. Now, I have never heard no one talk about this. This is just something that came to my mind. I have been in these situations, right? I believe more than once. I, I truly believe I've been in this situation, right? And it's something that's not talked about. I don't think a lot because it doesn't happen a lot but listen to me very carefully if anyone in your life that you deeply deeply loved to the point where they use that word soulmate does this with you right this is what they'll do they'll repeatedly go no contact with you. They may threaten you throughout the years, but they'll repeatedly go no contact. And that's because it's kind of, you know, the hoovering, bringing you back. I mean, part of them wishes that it could work. And then throughout this process, there's some aggressive temperament behavior, maybe aggression on the phone. But you notice when they get aggressive with you, they go back in hiding. They go no contact. This is why sometimes it happens. Like I said, it's rare. It happens because this individual loves you enough, whatever their version of love is, and they know that they are homicidal and they do not want to kill you. However, for many victims that end up being killed, they do not pick up on this red flag. So what happens is they keep going after the narcissist. And when the narcissist continues to discard and go back in hiding and continue to get away, the victim continues to call, beg them for a relationship, show up at their home. And this person is vulnerable and they're very much attracted to you just physically. It's only a physical attraction. And I'm not sure exactly how a female may go about this, maybe in the same type of way. Actually, I'm going to say this. I'm kind of like that, y'all. This is weird that I would even think of this because I've kind of had a similar experience, right? Okay, I'm going to give you an example. I've had um, a narcissistic friend um, that was abusive. I mean, this was a, a just a, a cool female friend. I mean, we were like almost like family, right? When I began to not be able to handle her narcissistic behavior anymore, and the disputes over the phone got to the point where I snapped and began to say, hey, you know, you do this again, I'll fight you or whatever. And this was over name calling. This particular person called my relatives names and they were very, very little children, right? These were babies that this female was calling names. Um, she lacked self-control. And when I got to the point where I couldn't take this no more and I'm like, look, you want to just go outside and box? Because I'm like, don't call my relatives that are babies no names. And the friendship didn't end right at that point, but it eventually did. It just had to go away. It just wasn't meant to be in my life. However, I can remember telling another friend 
one of the reasons I don't want to be her friend anymore is because her behavior makes me react to her and I just can't take it no more. It had been many, many years. I mean, this, this lady would call me names. She was one of those type of friends where, um, and I loved her deeply and I believe she had love for me too, but she was one of those type of friends where she took her stress out on me. She didn't have a bunch of friends. She was real family oriented and she seemed to take her stress out on me and probably others, not just me. However, so that's a good example. I mean, in that case, I didn't want to kill this lady, but I got away from her because what I didn't want to do was fight her neither. Okay. Cause not the brat, but she just wasn't winning the fight y'all. This lady was not winning the fight. For one, she didn't deserve to win it. And for one, when you calling people relatives, calling some babies names, um, I'm gonna make sure I win that because you just don't do that. You just don't do that type of stuff. So, and like I said, this was many, many years ago, but I got away from that lady in that situation because she was taking me out of my nature. See, that's the thing with narcissists. They threaten you. They call your relatives names, keep calling you names. And eventually you do reactive abuse because you just can't take it no more. So that would be an example of, I use self-control. I'm like, no, nah, it's time to go. That's That was a red flag to me that I had had enough of her because if I want to go out in the sidewalk and box and get this on over with so you can go on and lose this fight because I'm about sick of you and your narcissistic behavior and I'm losing my temper. I don't even want a friend like that. I mean, I want to be around friends that's bringing the best out of me. So that would be somewhat of an example. But going back to this original example, when, especially if it's a male, a lot of men that um, have severe mental disorders, for certain women, they don't want to hurt you. He knows what he's capable of. He, he knows he's armed. He knows that um, he may have a severe, he could have been in the military, right? He has a severe case of military PTSD. He's um, went through two to three, maybe four abusive marriages. He was the abuser, y'all, right? I'm not saying this man's the victim. Um, but there's this bond that he has with you. He may respect your parenting. He knows that you really have a family that loves you. Um, in some cases, in some cases, he's um, you and him have sent pictures of each other where you've seen him as a little boy and he's seen you as a little girl on your old family photos, right? So this man doesn't want to hurt you. He doesn't want to kill you. He knows that he's a ticking time bomb. In his soul, he knows this. However, he has stuff to lose. He has a job. He has a place. But in his mind, he know he's like Looney Tune. He know he's crazy. It's coming out of him. He's showing it. But he continues to get away from you. He continues to get away from you because that Lord that's working in his soul has you under a protection too. And this man doesn't want to take your life going forward. And like I said, I've never heard this talked about anywhere. I just thought about it because I believe that I was in a situation like that. I do. I believe 
that I was in a situation like that and I allowed the discards. It took time for me to figure it out. I'm actually kind of just now putting it all together. Really, I mean, to really put it together to do this video, I'm glad that I allowed those discards. I was discarding too. Because as the behavior spiraled out of control, the man was sick, y'all. I mean, some people are sick mentally. You know, they have started taking medications that didn't agree with them. Um, they've been through traumas like the military, um, childhood molestations, rapes. They've had a long history of abuse themselves where they've been the abuser. Um, they have addictions. They've been on alcohol. In their younger days, they may have been on other drugs like heroin and cocaine or all kind of drugs, popping pills. So they have this background, right? And so as they get older, they've like lost their mind. So... One example would be this um, lady. It's been, a, I think, over last year. This lady left her 16-year-old daughter with this man. And he was her boyfriend. So her, she left her boyfriend and her 16-year-old daughter at home. And her daughter called her mom and said, I'm scared. This man keeps coming in my room. Within so many minutes... The stepdad or her mother's boyfriend shot her in the head. Um, I think they found her pants down and his pants down. I'm not sure if he raped her. I'm not sure what he did, but he snapped. The man was mentally ill, y'all. The man was a nut. The man was a narcissist. The man was crazy. His own niece was crying in court. Couldn't figure out why he would do that to his 16-year-old stepdaughter. So that's an example. But in that case, it's not an example of him controlling himself. It's an example of someone that didn't discard. But see, sometimes a man could be like that. And he discard you and your daughter. And he just run. He just go away. You never hear from him. That's because he know what's in his head and he know he might rape or kill your daughter so he just get away from y'all. And it does happen. Okay, I believe it happened with me. And it's that, I don't know if that's a form of love. I guess it could be in its own way. So if I could ever say, okay, well, did that narcissist really love me or care? in any kind of way, I could testify that yes, I feel like he made sure it didn't work and continue to discard because, and allowed me to discard. He allowed himself to do enough where I would discard too. So you gotta remember at some point, I'm getting rid of the narcissist more than he's getting rid of me in some sense. So if I could say, well, was it any kind of love there? I could say, yes, that man didn't kill me. And he was very much capable of it. Had the weapons and the collection of weapons to do it, but he refused to do it. And a lot of it could have been because he was the type. He was also very, he was mature. He was older than me. So he also used logic and reasoning. This was a man that never had done penitentiary time. He'd never been to prison. So some of it was that too. But I think that was just going to come with it. He wouldn't go to prison because he just didn't want to hurt me. Now... That wasn't always the case, okay? 
another narcissist probably would have killed me by now, even if it was an accidental murder, okay? And a red flag, okay, when sometimes this narcissist will discard you and keep doing it because he don't want to kill you. One of the red flags that this is being done listen to me very carefully, is this. So if you've been in this situation where this kept happening, but you know he's lost his mind, for real, he's lost his mind. The man talking crazy, going off. He's spiraling out of control. There's a weird threat out of nowhere over nothing. He started looking mad all the time, looking like just an angry man. Another red flag that he's discarding, making sure the relationship don't work because he doesn't want to kill you. And he also doesn't want to beat you up neither. He doesn't want to beat you. One of the red flags that he's doing this is he never physically hits you. Okay, listen to me. A man that doesn't want to hurt you. He will never hit you. Even if he's hit somebody before. See, what he did before in these type of cases, this sometimes case, has nothing to do with you. Think about it. You've had people in your life, sometimes you, you don't love everybody the same. That's why you got parental love, you got spousal love, you got sibling love, you got friendship love, neighborly love, coworker love, you got different types of love. So this particular, sometimes this happens, this person got a special heart for you. So for you, you're kind of like, somebody that touched his soul some kind of way, right? Like kind of like, it's like a level of real love, but he can't really fully love you because he's a narcissist, right? Or highly narcissistic, which means he couldn't be diagnosed with MPD, but he has very little empathy to offer. And the empathy that he is offering is going for you because he don't want to hurt you. But one of the red flags that this is happening is that he'll never hit you. I was in this situation. This man never hit me. Ever. And so that's a sign right there. So let him go because if you keep not allowing the discards and you chase this man and not pick up on the sometimes this happens, he's going to kill you and be very sorry for it and not mean to do it. Those are the cases where you see these men in court and they cry like babies. They ain't always faking y'all. When you see those rare cases where the man has killed his ex-girlfriend, his current girlfriend, or his ex-wife or current wife, um, I'm going to mainly speak on when they kill their exes. You'll notice this pattern where the family will even say, well, they kept breaking up for long periods of time. They were because he didn't want to kill her. But he knew he was sick, but it was hard for him to really do the full discard because she loved him so much and she kept chasing him. You can love a man that strong where you just keep chasing him and you're basing it on your love for the man, but the man love you too. That's why he keep getting away from you. He don't want to kill you. The man know he crazy in the head. The man know he's got bells going off in his head. This man knows how sick he is because he lives in his own head. He knows. 
And I believe I was in a situation like this. And these are the red flags. I hope this helps you. Sometimes it happens. Ultimately, the reason I'm doing this video is this. Is so the dynamics that I just explained. Realize that's the dynamic and it's rare for it to happen. And you make sure you go full no contact. In a case like this, if you ever see this type of man out in public, always wave and be friendly. What you don't want to do is um, be an enemy. Where I'm from in the Midwest, sometimes how you stay alive is by saying hello. You know, a lot of times that no contact and restraining orders, that pisses people off. So with this type of sometimes this happens video of this example, I'm saying you want that particular man to always feel like you, you got love for him. So in this case, you just always play it off. If you see him at the grocery store, hey, how you doing? You doing good? He might say, yeah, baby, I'm fine. Keep him in that mode where he keeps that soul where he don't want to kill you, right? And so in those kind of cases, you just don't want to be rude, okay? This is just my advice. This is something that I put into action. Um, this particular person, I would be in situations where... Sorry about that. Okay, let me repeat this again. In these kind of situations, you just don't want to create an enemy. It's You just kind of like be, just keep it cool, right? But um, this does happen. It, it really does. It's, it's rare, but a lot of women, they don't pick up on the red flags. And I gave you some of the red flags and um, I believe it happens because they just got a soul for you. The Lord has put it on their heart and basically told them don't do it. And they're trying to follow that. And um, they're discarding you in this case so they don't kill you. And in a lot of cases like this, what happens? This can happen too, y'all. Say some years go by. This would be the type of man you see on the news because he's killed somebody else. And you're sitting watching the news like, oh my goodness, that could have been me. But he just stayed away from you. He just went on to somebody else. Um, another situation many years ago, um, this wasn't someone I was... Um, boyfriend, girlfriend with, but we were kind of like um, adopted family type of thing many, many years ago. And um, I observed, I didn't know what I was observing or watching at the time, but this gentleman had a pretty much a nervous breakdown. And I didn't know what he was having at the time, but it was... Um, just concerning, um, it was a concern situation. And I was actually around the person one evening in a parking lot and the person was very intoxicated. Um, several years later, he murdered the mother of his children right in front of the children. He wasn't the type of man where he would ever hurt kids. He, he was the type of man, he always was kind and loving to children. He was from the South originally, born and raised in the South. But I watched that particular man have a breakdown, full-blown nervous breakdown. Like I said, at the time, I didn't know what it was. Um, and he was explaining to me, I forgot what he said. They said he had a clinical breakdown or whatever he said that, they, they, at his job, he checked in at the, one of the manager's offices and they had a, 
on the insurance at that particular job, they covered therapy, right? Employer therapy or whatever. You know how some companies you can get therapy. It's, it's not just with your insurance. It's some kind of other program that they have. I forgot how it worked. I, I never utilized any of that type of stuff, but um, I've heard some jobs will cover like immediate therapy. It's it's not just your insurance. It's some other other program or whatever, right? So he was diagnosed as being basically having like a nervous breakdown. And several years later, he did kill. Now, like I said, in his case, and he's still in prison right now to this day, but in his case, I wasn't in a relationship with him, but I watched it happen. Now, in the situation I was in, that man, whatever drop of love he had or whatever that is he had for me, he just didn't want to kill me, y'all. And I, I understand that now. And I'm glad I allowed all that, all those warning signs. He was basically begging for help. He's basically... He was saying to me silently, please leave me alone. I'm dangerous. I watched the collection of the weapons, the violent temperaments that spiraled out of control. I saw it all. I heard it all and I'm still alive, but just get away. Let them, let them get rid of you. They don't want to kill you. And like I said, these cases are rare, but there's some people that know what's really going off in their brain and they just don't want to do you like that. Like I said, I use the example of I'm kind of like that too. Like, like I know I can't take no narcissist like that. I know what I can take and what I can't. So I don't sign up for it because that way I'm in the right position with the Lord too. I'm not involved in that reactive abuse. I'm not the type of person where I could just consistently take ongoing abuse and have self-control the entire time. I just won't keep self-control because I care about myself enough. I'm going to try to put a stop to it some kind of way. I might put a stop to it, call the police or do something. But if I don't have no police support and I don't have no bodyguard to support it, I'm going to start coming back at that because it's not something, it's not in my nature, it's not in my makeup to take a bunch of ongoing abuse. And that's because I wasn't raised in an environment where that was just the total norm, like I'm not saying my family never had fights and I never seen a domestic violence situation, but overall, I was one of them kids where my grandma running her business and she at work and we eating fried chicken and taking long naps and we could take long naps after eating this fried chicken because there wasn't no domestic violence consistently going on. Kind of like overall, it was a lot of peace in my environment growing up. I could look back and say that part of my childhood mostly was peaceful. And that's how I lived as a child. And that's what I'm used to now. Now, some people... That's all they know. They never really been in a house where it wasn't loud noise and fighting and they're immune to it. So I'm not immune to it. So it goes against the grain of who I am. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, I truly believe that that particular man spared my life. And I didn't know it when it first was happening, but the entire time he was sparing my life my physical life, and my feelings. I remember him telling me, I don't want to hurt you. At the time, I thought it just meant emotionally. 
But when I look back on it, he meant in all ways, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. So, yeah. So, um, just remember, sometimes this happens, y'all. Okay? For both men and women, but really, real strong for men. Because remember, a man's nature, even though there's many men that kill women, a man's nature is a protector of women. And that's why when I say sometimes this happens, sometimes that dangerous man has this soul for you and this love for you and he don't want to hurt you because that protective instinct is kicking in. Because that's a man's true nature is to protect us. Despite what you hear, oh, they all bad, they no good, they all narcissists. No, that's not true. I was raised around protective men. They weren't perfect, but they were protectors. So because of that nature, sometimes this happens. He's going to discard you so he doesn't kill you or beat you to death, stab you, do something very horrible to you. He knows he's capable of doing it. He knows he thinks about doing it to you sometimes because you make him angry because you're not doing what he asks you to do anymore. You're not giving him sex when he wants it. You're no longer wanting to marry him. You no longer think he's this kind, nice man. You may have even mentioned before you came into awareness, hey, I know you're a narcissist now. This particular man told me. He said, yeah, I'm a narcissist. This is what he told me. He never disagreed with it. Actually bragged about it. Sometimes this happens, y'all. Thank the Lord for this type of man's soul that he got away. And don't be surprised if you're ever in a situation like this and many, many years later you see him on the news and he's killed somebody else. Just cry. Just cry. That's all you can do. Cry for the victim. Because something like that will make you break down because you basically were like the victim that got away or the victim that he let get away. Because in your case, he made a decision to discard and not kill you. And sometimes this happens, y'all. Please like, share, and subscribe. And please leave a comment. Sometimes I forget to say leave a comment. I have my regulars that I love so much that leave comments, but please leave a comment. I love comments. I love learning from the comments. I love your insight too, because this advanced insight is for you and me and everyone else. Please share the video. I have been on this bike almost 34 minutes, y'all. Thank you.